I think about therapist Nancy often. She really had an uphill battle when she took on the Brown family. I wonder if she has kept up with the show and what she thinks of what has become of her former patient. I have said in my last couple videos that in my opinion, the family structure Cody and his wives set up with the sheer number of kids meant that neglect was built into the equation. Even if Cody operated with the best of intentions, which he obviously did not, his wives and even worse, his kids would feel the harsh sting of growing up with a neglectful parent. Well, in her latest YouTube video, Gwen reacts to the season finale of season two, and she details the devastating effect that Robin had on the family. We have a lot to talk about. Let's get into today's video. <laughs> Hey everyone, what's up? It's Sarah and welcome back to my channel. In the season two finale of Sister Wives, the Browns are settling into their new lives in Las Vegas. They are in a vacation rental for a month while all of the wives scramble to find more permanent rentals. One of the many things that I found interesting was how all of the adults decide that Robin finding a home would be the first priority because her kids have moved a lot. We all decided that that Robin needed to be the first person to get a house. My kids have moved around a lot. We wanted to get them in a home and settle as, as quickly as possible. That was nice of them. Janelle has commented on the show that she has counted 17 moves they have made as a family. So I'm sorry, but these other kids have moved a shit ton too. This is just another example of Robin elevating herself and her kids into needing preferential treatment under false pretenses. And it was all of these small, subtle moves which had the OG3 and all of their kids suddenly like, what the fuck, when they end up in Flagstaff seeing their dad every few months. It's like you look back at these moments and you're like, okay, yeah, now I see how we got there. This is why I'm so glad Gwen is re-watching the series and giving her commentary, especially on these early seasons. It gives so much context. Now that we're in Vegas, we've got some pretty big news. <laughs> She's pregnant. So we took this pregnancy test and all of a sudden he stops and he goes, we're pregnant. We're pregnant? And just tears. We've been keeping it a secret. Just the two of us. It's just a secret between the two of us right now. And I've been sort of. It's a fun secret to have. It's not really a relationship when they keep doing this. It's like it's just the two of them and they're not including the rest of the parents like at all. But it doesn't seem like they're all in a relationship. It just seems like it's Cody and Robin and then the rest of his like mistresses. Oh look, another secret just between Robin and Cody. Have they learned nothing from the dress shopping debacle that that doesn't go over well in a sister wives family dynamic? Gwen says it's like it's just the two of them and they aren't including the rest of the parents at all. Exactly. She goes on to say it doesn't seem like they're all in a relationship. It's like it's Cody and Robin and the rest are just his mistresses. Gwen notices here that almost immediately the original three wives have been relegated to wives in name only. Cody's sense of duty replaced any of his feelings of affection he had for his OG three once Robin entered the picture. Before Robin came into the family, all of the children were born after Cody had married his wives. So all of the children only ever knew this family dynamic. And while it was likely far from perfect, it was relatively stable for the kids. Imagine witnessing your mother go from wife and mom, likely you viewed her as equal to your other moms, to something like a mistress. How devastating, especially for young girls growing up in this kind of family dynamic. Later on in Gwen's reaction video, she describes the change in dynamics between her siblings after they no longer all lived under one roof. Like when we moved into the cul-de-sac, I do recall that I don't know if I specifically noticed it at the time, but like looking back, it did not feel like it felt when we lived in the Lehigh house, it felt more separate and 
less like we were sibling siblings because when we lived in the Lehigh house, it was definitely like we were siblings. We could show up, they were all our moms. But when we lived in the cul-de-sac in Las Vegas, it did start to look back, it started to feel more like we were cousins and we were more like half siblings. Like these were all our moms. They were just our dad's other wife kind of thing. And so watching that is kind of sad for me a little bit. Really the public deserves to see how like close we were as a family. And obviously not everything was perfect because we were normal. It's sad to see the, the closeness and the proximity. It's only season three now. Like, I can already tell that it's decreasing so much. Gwen says that in the Lehigh house, they all felt like siblings, and the moms felt like everyone's mom. But when they moved, and even to the cul-de-sac, it felt like they were cousins or half-siblings, and it just wasn't the same as living in the Lehigh house. And of course, we know that moving out of the Lehigh house was largely due to the fact that it couldn't fit Robin. Oh, and of course, the whole threat of prosecution that probably wasn't all that big of a threat in actuality. But the house definitely couldn't fit another wife and three more kids, and they weren't going to have the whole family living together and Robin off by herself. Although she may have ended up liking that. I found this really interesting because I always regarded the cul-de-sac as being the ideal setup for the Brown family. The moms got some autonomy and the kids were right next door to each other. But the kids, or at least Gwen, didn't view it this way. They went from this cohesive family unit, or at least what the kids viewed as cohesive, where now they functioned more like half-siblings or cousins. And the moms went from being all of their moms to their dad's other wives. That is so heartbreaking to hear. Honestly, it's an unfortunate side effect of this lifestyle that what might be best for the moms isn't always what's best for the kids. And most parents would do what is best for the kids. But in this particular instance, and I don't judge any of the moms for realizing that being in the room right next to their husband and his other wives might not be what's best for your mental health. But like, don't move your kids out of their schools unnecessarily. If certain traumatizing events can be avoided, most parents would. Gwen does recognize it was good for her mom and Mary to have their own places, but this was an unfortunate and devastating side effect of that. Viewers have commented in these later seasons that the younger kids don't have as tight of a bond as the older kids did. And I think that all goes back to the fact that Christine literally was raising all of the kids as one unit. Cut to Christmas 2020 and Ari has trouble recalling her siblings' names. Look at me, you. So cool. Aww, you're and so it's from her. Yes. Thank you for It's interesting and it's even a little sad that Ariella is, is forgetting who her brothers and sisters are. Gwen says it's sad for her to see the decreasing of their connection occurring so early on. Like, this is just season two. She thinks that the public deserves to see how close they were as a family while clarifying that obviously not everything was perfect. And I get that. Personally, I would have loved to see more of the family from that very first episode when it was like, hi, I'm Cody. And he's going around saying, this is your brother from another mother or to his girls. He's like, your sister's from the same mister. It was dorky and cute and totally the type of dad jokes that made Cody endearing to a lot of viewers early on. It's just so tragic going back and seeing how Robin coming into the family just completely destroyed what they had built. And that's not all Robin's fault. A lot, if not most, of the blame for the destruction of this family falls on Cody. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on my second channel, Sarah Spills, a link for that will be in the description of this video if you want to check that out. Follow me on Instagram, threads, and Twitter at Reality Squad, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Take care. Have a good one. Much love.